The views expressed on the following broadcast do not necessarily reflect those of KHLT, Take 12 Radio, or our affiliates. The opinions on this show should not be considered as medical, psychological, or professional advice and are those of the host, co-host, and guest. Take 12 Radio and KHLT Recovery Broadcasting are not affiliated with any particular 12-step fellowship. One day at a time with its failures and fears With portion of pain and burden of care We must meet Welcome to Walking Through the Language of the Heart, a journey into the grapevine writings of Alcoholics Anonymous co-founder, Bill W. And now, here are your co-hosts, Chris S. and the Monty Man. Well, greetings, family. Welcome to episode number 26 of Walking Through the Language of the Heart with our good friend, Chris S., who is on the line with me now. Greetings, Chris. Monty, how you doing this week? It has been a busy week uh, here at the studio. Uh, gave the uh, the oversized fish tank a major overhaul and uh, wasn't paying attention. And a couple of the tubs that I was filling, removing the water, overflowed. <laughs> so out came the shop vac oh, no. and... Uh, uh, this chubby little guy was running around faster than uh, you would even imagine he could. Uh, so that that was interesting. But we've been doing some uh, house cleaning here in uh, in the studio and at the office. But uh, yeah, exciting times, and I'm I'm excited about this show because this is going to be a little different, right? Yeah, we're moving into sec segment two, which is. Uh, what I, you know, I believe it's going to be a shift. It's it's going to be uh, maybe some deeper, um, you know, deeper thought provoking articles uh, than the ones in section one. You know, Bill is has matured quite a bit. This is, you know, we're we're moving into September 1944, and he's grabbing at, you know, different kinds of topics. Mm-hmm. Um, tonight's Tonight's article is, uh, it looks like, it looks like it's an article on an article somebody else wrote. So we'll see, we'll see what he's talking about here tonight. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, before we get into that listeners, if you've just joined us, uh, you can get caught up on all these shows of walking through the language of the heart by visiting us at take 12 radio.com and clicking on the recovery workshops banner. All right, Chris launch us forth. Okay, we're in uh, we're in segment two, additional writings from the earlier period. I guess you can call the forties the earlier period of Alcoholics Anonymous. Yeah, this is from September nineteen forty four. So comments on Wiley ideas. Um, at the top, it says in an article entitled "Philip Wiley Jabs a Little Needle into Complacency." The noted writer said that he's an alcoholic who quit solo. He went on to mention psychiatry and other scientific aids as factors that kept him sober. Bill's reply follows. Oh, this is going to be interesting. Interesting, yeah. You know, forever people are getting sober 1,200 different ways from Sunday. And, you know, there are a lot of people who can quit drinking. Um and, and a lot of times what they don't understand is they don't understand the scale of alcoholism. And the scale of alcoholism is such that to be an alcoholic is to be someone who can't quit. Right. So you, you might be the heaviest drinker in the world. You might be going into a blackout every night. But, but if you could just quit solo, then you aren't what is described by Alcoholics Anonymous as powerless or an alcoholic, <laughs> you know, you're a potential alcoholic, a heavy drinker that, you know, that's the way they define it. That's the way Alcoholics Anonymous defines it. How, you know, how the scientific community or the treatment community defines it is, you know, really their business. And, 
and how, and however they want to do that. Uh, you know, there's uh, uh, there's a lot of people that uh, really don't think Alcoholics Anonymous is necessary. And in their case, it might not be. <laughs> but right. if you're in real trouble with alcohol, <laughs> it's been my experience that there's 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 no there's no other way. There just isn't. You know, you, you, you know, I've ne- I've never seen I've never seen somebody that I would consider a hopeless alcoholic uh, get sober. You know, uh, a- any any other any other way except for a vital spiritual experience that can happen. You know, with with people going to church or, or whatever. I'm not saying that it can't, but somebody that just up and decides to quit and is able to quit on their own power that makes them non-alcoholic. <laughs> he, he, yeah. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You, you know, I have to say, so anyway, I, I, have, and that's, I, I have, I have to say, I, I, I look at this thing, you know, and I hear, I hear it a lot too. Well, AA is not the only way. In fact, there's, there's a book out there by a guy by the name of Melanie Solomon. I had her on the uh, the show years ago, and it was called AA, Not the Only Way. It was more about mm-hmm. being critical of AA than it was about promoting other ways, right? Which is kind of common. Um, mm-hmm. But 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 what I what I've noticed though, or or at least my own experience has been, if I want to address an issue or a a project or or uh, something I want to accomplish and I don't know anything about it, I'm going to investigate sources that were the most effective in that area, whether I'm building a birdhouse or whether I'm getting sober. And so in my journey of investigation, what I found out was uh, in the long run, the thing that had the longevity, the thing that, that really proved itself out, that worked the best, it always came back to the tools of the 12-step programs leading you into a relationship with a power greater than you to help you solve your problem. There were other methods that worked kind of. There were other methods that maybe lent themselves to helping you in certain aspects of your life. But when it came to alcoholism and the driving force of the reasons I drank, I kept going back to what was recorded as the most successful method. And I'm thinking, why wouldn't I do that? If I'm going to go get heart surgery, I'm going to look at the heart surgeon that has had the highest success rate, right? I, I kind of don't understand why people wouldn't do that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You bet. You bet. Yeah. It, it's, it's, you know, let's, let's look at the outcomes. You know, I, I, I know Melanie and I know, you know, I know the book that you're referring to. It, right. it has, uh, it, it's almost a yellow pages of every kind of uh, process that's out there for, uh, uh, for drug addiction or alcoholism. And, and it's a really, you know, I, I, I like Melanie and I, I like, I like the book. Uh, uh, but, but I, again, it, it really doesn't address the scale of alcoholism. Right. You know, no matter how far down the scale you've gone, you know, your ability to quit on a non-spiritual basis is going to depend on the amount of control you've lost in drink. You, 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 ha- you have to reference that scale when you're deciding on a recovery program. And many of the recovery programs that are in that book are, are valid and they're, they're going to work for heavy drinkers and, yeah. and drug abusers galore. Uh, but, but the people that are true, truly powerless, that it's got to be, it's got to be a spiritual, it's got to be a personality change sufficient. It's got to be a, a spiritual experience that's revolutionary mm-hmm. within the individual. Uh, it's that's the only thing, you know, I've ever seen. Another thing is 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 not necessarily Melanie, but a, a lot of the people who uh, criticize Alcoholics Anonymous are criticizing the fellowship. Yes, they, they've had a bad experience with the fellowship. Mm-hmm. They've gone to some meetings and they've raised their hand and acted like a big shot because they've got a Ph.D. in psychiatry or something. And people have shut them down. And, and, you know, a plumber has told them, shut up, stupid. 
<laughs> you know, you got you got two weeks. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, wait till you get a year and then you can share. You know, they've had like an experience like that. And they've bolted out of there. And now, now they're going to write an article ab about, you know, how terrible Alcoholics Anonymous is. Well, I, you know, I would just challenge anybody that's that's going to be writing a critical analysis of Alcoholics Anonymous to, to write it on the program, not to write it about the fellowship. Because just like just like certain churches have, you know, people in the congregation that you you wouldn't want dating your <laughs> daughter, uh, it doesn't mean the the church itself and and uh, you, you know the belief systems within the church uh, is wrong. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. So let's see what it ha what it says here. Philip Wiley's piece in this issue of the Grapevine will endear the man to every AA and why? Because of course he's so very alcoholic. I think he's going to poke <laughs> fun at this guy, right? Yeah. Neither can anyone miss the author's generous and self-sacrificing spirit. Forgetting his own worldly importance. He snaps his fingers at what the public may think. He discards his reputation in order to share with us his character. A traveler who has felt his own way out of the night, he tells how he discovers Haven. We could ask no better spirit of anyone. Mr. Wiley can be a member of AA the very day he says so. Hmm. It is tradition among us that the individual has the unlimited right to his own opinion on any subject under the sun. He is compelled to agree with no one if he likes. He can disagree with everyone. And indeed, when on a dry bender, many AAs do. Therefore, no AA should be disturbed if he cannot fully agree with all of Mr. Wiley's truly stimulating discourse. Rather, shall we reflect that the roads to recovery are many, um, that any story or theory of recovery from one who has tried the highway is bound to contain much truth? Mr. Wiley's article is like an abundance of fresh fruit. Perhaps we should take the advice of the housewife who says we shall eat all we can and, and then can, can what we can't. Let me read that again because I don't understand that. Uh -huh. We shall eat all we can, can and then can all we can. Okay, I understand that now. <laughs> uh, so, so again, Bill, Bill is so non-critical, so open-minded, but – you know, he knows that this Wiley guy is probably a, a little bit, uh, a little bit off base or certainly can't speak for everyone. Um, and, uh, but it's a very, very generous approach to someone who might be very critical of Alcoholics Anonymous. And, you know, there's a million people out there that are, uh, what do you need AA for? I wonder sometimes, though, because when we read, what, and we have referenced this a lot, uh, about the wordsmithness of Bill W., you know, his ability to capture uh, the spirit of this fellowship and program so well in the writings. And he is very gracious, and he is very humble in his writings. But I wonder behind closed doors, like many of us, when he's having coffee with his buddies— what are you saying about Mr. Wiley here? You know, are you serious? This guy's a moron. You, you know, you, you wonder. I don't know that he would do that. But as human beings go, when we know we're going to publish something or broadcast something, we may have a little more wisdom in how we present it than when we're talking with our wife or our girlfriend, right? You, you never know. You, you, never you know, know. <laughs> I th he certainly was careful with his writings. Yes. And, you know, another thing to, to try to understand about Bill Wilson is, Monty, you and I are both in our 60s, right? Yep. Am, am I correct in yep. in, uh, in attributing that uh, decade to you? Yep. Bill Wilson was from our grandparents' generation, our grandparents' mm. generation. You know, that, that, that was a long time ago, World War One. You know? <laughs> so there was just, there was just different ways of, of, of speaking and acting. 
but um, but Bill Bill was a different guy. I want to tell one story. I, I collected and listened to one at one period of time, as many of the first 100 uh, as I as I could find. The early early 1930s and early 40s. Uh, members, because because I'm just I've been curious. I was curious about just what was going on back then. And this one guy tells a story that he's in a car with Bill, and he and Bill are in the back seat, and some somebody's driving, and they're driving into New York City from where Bill lives or whatever, and they get a flat tire, and the whole way Bill is talking, talk 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 talk. So the guy's concerned. They're pulled over the side of the road, and and the the driver doesn't know what to do and he's like bill you know the, you know, we're we're on like the west side highway here we are, don't worry don't worry it's going to work itself out it's going to work itself out meanwhile talk 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 talk, talk. <laughs> he doesn't he doesn't <laughs> stop for a second someone pulls up some stranger pulls up opens up their trunk takes out the spare jacks the car up puts the spare tire on closes it all up and says you're all good now and drive away and Bill just talk, talk, talk. He, he never, he never stopped for a second. He just, he had this, had this faith, you know, that, that, don't worry about the flat tire on the highway. It's going to be all right. And it was, and this, this guy's mind was blown. You know, he's one of, he's one of the early AAs. I don't know what that has to do with this, but uh, That's it, great. Was, it was a story that kind of jumped into my mind. That's great. All right. It says here, what caught my attention most was his reference to the spiritual experience, a la Jung, seemingly induced by scientific psychological technique. What a boon that would be to us who wrestle every day with the agnostic newcomer. If only we could give him a straight dose of that transcendent symbol and have it over with. We wouldn't have to bother with that tedious business of waiting while our prospect batters himself into sufficient open-mindedness to accept the possibility of a power greater than himself. So, so this, this is an interesting paragraph because I know some other non-conference approved history of Bill Wilson that, that, that is, is interesting to me when it's laid uh, beside this particular paragraph, Bill is saying if there was a non-spiritual uh, uh, solution to alcoholism, man, we would grab that because it would help the newcomer. You know, if 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 somehow we could in five minutes fix the newcomer, if we could put him through detox or put him through twenty-eight day, and and that would fix the newcomer, you know, we we would we would latch on to that, right? And he's telling the truth because. Later on in life, he tried he tried under uh, under a psychiatrist direction from UCLA. He tried LSD to see if that would bring about uh, a spiritual awakening rather than the steps. Okay, and and that was a dead end, right? Him and some other people. I, I think I think what made him stop was uh, Lois turned into a Muppet, you know, on him, and, and <laughs> you know he he just he just gave up LSD entirely after that. Uh, another thing that he did was uh, vitamin B therapy. I mean, you know, niacin therapy. I mean, he went all in on this. He even said that he believes that his his studies into vitamin B therapy is what he's going to be remembered for, not Alcoholics Anonymous. His vitamin cuz he got so deep into it and that ended up being a dead end. But he was looking, he was open-minded enough to think, okay, if if there is another way, man, I would like to know about it. But they were all dead ends. The thing that was was resonant and and revelatory for the alcoholic was what uh, what they had put together exiting the Archer group, which was the twelve steps. You know what I mean? Yeah. So let me comment on that. Sure. I was thinking about some of the stuff that's going on today with the research into psilocybin and uh, you know some mental health issues. Uh, there's even a research company up in Washington state that's looking into different types of amphetamine, uh, treatment. And, and I think, I think it always comes back to, you know, 
uh, man's man's attempt to do what only God can do. Because I, I think we deal with a pride issue and, and an ego, and I think we're, we're always trying to go the easier, softer way. And, of course, it ends up being more difficult than, you know, really what the spiritual solution would be. But they sure are making a lot of noise about mushrooms right now. Yeah, and, you know, and some of it might even be be valid. I, I mean, listen, LSD therapy is still ongoing. It's it's under the table a little bit more than maybe the the, the psilocybin stuff. But there's there's always been, you know, spiritual practices. Uh, you know, with with uh, peyote and you know, and and I believe what happens is is temporarily you have a spiritual experience. Now, no, I know I did, you know, when I experimented with some of these things back in the day, allegedly, Monty, right? Allegedly. I, you know, <laughs> I, I had a spiritual experience. A, a spiritual experience is something like, boom, you've had an experience. What the solution to alcoholism is not necessarily a spiritual experience. It's a spiritual awakening. Mm -hmm. Right. Which is which is a, a longer lasting experience with the divine rather than just just a, a, a quick shot shot in, in the arm. So, you know, that's the way I would that's the way I would look mm -hmm. at it. Uh, you know, are, are some of these therapies valid? You know, there are some serious people that I have a lot of respect for that are involved in them. So I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and say it's it's serious study that's going to have some potential positive impact. Uh, is ever taking any of those things going to give someone the spiritual awakening that we get through the steps uh, and a recovery from alcoholism? I, I seriously doubt it mm -hmm. it certainly hasn't as far as i've seen up to this point you know yeah all right so it says here but as mr wiley broad-mindedly observes it doesn't matter too much how the transforming spiritual experience is brought about so long as one gets one that works for him Somehow the alcoholic must get enough objectivity about himself to abate his fears and collapse his false pride. If he can do all this through his intellect and therefore support his life structure upon a transcendent symbol, more power to him. Most AAs, however, would think this design for living pretty inadequate. They would consider downright humility and faith in the power of the living God a much stronger medicine. AA draws frankly upon emotion and faith, while the scientific intellectual would avoid these resources as much as he can. Yet the more intellectual techniques do work sometimes, reaching those who might never be able to take the stronger dose. Besides, they remind us, when overly proud of our own accomplishment, that AA has no mo monopoly on reviving alcoholics. Now, again, that's that's very very, very, uh, very, very open, open-minded. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, um, in fact, it is already evident that the scientific world is becoming more appreciative of our methods than we are of theirs. In this respect, they are commencing to teach us humility. Hmm. Listen again as our friend Dr. Harry Tebow, psychiatrist, closes his paper, Basic Techniques of Alcoholics Anonymous, before the American Psychiatric Association. All right. The lesson for psychiatrists is clear, it seems to me. Although we admittedly deal with emotional problems, we as a group, which tends to be intellectual, distrust emotions too much. We are self-conscious and a little ashamed when we are forced to use them and always apologetic with our conferees if we suspect they have reason to think our methods are too emotional. In the meantime, others, less bound by tradition, go ahead and get results denied to us. It is highly imperative for us as presumably open-minded scientists to view wisely and long the efforts of others in our field of work. We may be wearing bigger blinders than we know. And again, as he says, a religious or spiritual experience is the act of giving up reliance on one's own omnipotence. 
Mm-hmm. As we AAs are people who are supposed to have given up all our own omnipotence, I'm sure that Mr. Wiley will read with the attentive interest he deserves, will be read with the uh, with the attentive interest he deserves. Now, this Wiley article is like long gone, probably not in print anymore. No one remembers it, you know, but it, it, it probably came out in the paper or a periodical or something right around yeah. 1948. And Bill felt the need to comment on it. You know, Alcoholics Anonymous doesn't do a lot of commenting anymore on, uh, on things. As a matter of fact, their public relations policy is almost always no comment. You know, because they don't want to uh, become engaged in any controversy uh, or uh, be uh, be seen as being critical of uh, of anyone or anything. You know what I mean? Yep. So so this being open to uh, to other methods of uh, of of recovery, you know, as as I've um, Listen, I went through an evangelical period, Monty, and I think if you don't go through an evangelical period where you're banging the big book as hard as you can in meetings, <laughs> I, I think you probably missed something, you know, if you if you haven't gone through that. But but as as I've as I've matured into you know the type of recovery I'm I'm experiencing you know today, um, you know, I am I am okay with with what with what if someone comes to me and asks me for help, I'm going to be really honest with them about what type of help they're going to need. So somebody, somebody called me today. They sent me an email and they said, you know, I've heard your talks, blah, blah, blah. Uh, uh, you know, I'm 60 years old. I've been in Alcoholics Anonymous since 1991. You know, I have six days sober. You know, I, I've been listening to Mark Houston tapes and, and, you know, Peter M tapes and, 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 you know, I, I, you know, I really, I really need, you know, I really need something. And, and basically, you know, what I explained to him is in five minutes, he convinced me that he was a real alcoholic. And my definition of a real alcoholic is someone who cannot quit on their own without a vital spiritual experience. And he's been, he's been in and out. Of, he's gone to a million meetings, this guy, right? And meetings do not offer a vital spiritual experience, unfortunately. Sometimes they just get you aggravated. <laughs> you know, I love them, but, but, you know, sometimes I walk out of a meeting, uh, you know, you know, uh, w- with a resentment I didn't have when I went in, you know? <laughs> so, so, uh, so I explained to him, I said, look, you know, you're, you're going to meetings, but you can't, re- you can't work a program like the people in the meetings you're, you're, you're in, you know, you, you can't do what they're doing because you've gone down the scale too far. You know, you probably should be on amends in your first 30 days. You know, that's how, that's how ill you are. You know, you, you, you know, you need, you need to approach these steps like they did in the thirties and forties. Like it's like your life is on the line, you know, and you need to make every amends and you need to develop a prayer and a meditation discipline and you need to work with other people and you need to be absolutely fearless and thorough with an inventory and be absolutely fearless and thorough with a fist step. And, and that's, that's how, that's how you need to approach this Alcoholics Anonymous because, because, you know, just going, going to meetings and expecting to, uh, stay sober like the rest of the people in the meetings, just because of your attendance is short-sighted for someone who is as ill as you are with alcoholism. You know, I, I had that conversation with somebody today and, and uh, you know, I get to have those wonderful, warm, uh, heartwarming conversations where, where I've got to blow somebody's spot up, but, but, I, but I need to, you know, I need to sometimes tell people the truth. Uh, you know, I know that I know you have the same type of experience as Monty. It never ceases to amaze me that that so many of us will attend these fellowship meetings, sometimes several a week. And at some point, we're going to read a statement that refers to our powerlessness, Right. We admitted we were powerless over this, that, and the other thing or whatever. But we're going to admit our powerlessness. But then we turn right around and we walk out of the meeting and we try to solve our issues 
on our own power. We do exactly the opposite. We try to work on our character defects without without any kind of spiritual connection. We try to change the direction of our circumstances. We we don't understand why our thinking is thwarted, and so we go to you know seminars and and, and learn about you know our true self and all this stuff, and we try to do it on our own intellect and our own power, and then turn around and say we're powerless. We're either powerless or we're not. And if I don't believe I'm powerless, then I'm not going to seek a power. Why would I? Right? So I have to be convinced that I am. And and that is what I see so much, not just in the fellowship, the 12-step fellowships, but just in the world in general. They're seeking this higher consciousness, but then they keep reverting back to, you know, their own primeval <laughs> And fleshly desires and wants and selfish ways and can't figure out what's wrong. You, you know, that that makes so much sense and I agree so much with 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 that that's that statement, Monty. Uh if if you aren't convinced you're an alcoholic, knowing what an alcoholic is, knowing about what what uh powerless to put to, to keep alcohol out of your body and powers to control it when it's in your body. If you're not, if you're not convinced of that, what you're going to say is these steps aren't going to be necessary for me in my case. And, and I think, I think a lot of people who've come to that conclusion consciously or unconsciously have, have died of active alcoholism because of it, when there was a solution to be had, you know, very, very sad. Yeah, indeed. So, so, you know, one of the things, um, one of the things that I'm particularly fond of is literature based meetings. Now, yeah. um, now, you know, I'll go to a discussion meeting, you know, I'll, I'll certainly, I go to a lot of speaker meetings and I'll even go to a 12 step and 12 tradition meeting. But what I what I really like is I like uh, I like meetings that uh, pick pieces of the foundational recovery document, you know, the book Alcoholics Anonymous, and throw that out there for for general sharing and identification. And and why you know why I why I like that is because it gives you the opportunity to. Uh, to give feedback, to share about, you know, the, the, the truth of your own personal alcoholism and the experience, your own personal experience with the recovery program. You know, there's a, there's a little, there's a little big, big book meeting about two miles from, from my house. And there's not many people at it. You know, there'll be, there'll be six people one week, 12 people the next, but it's uh it's it's a it's a big book study meeting, and and I love it. And then and then there's a men's meeting where anything goes. It's just like you know anybody got a problem today? You know <laughs> you know anybody got a topic? And and it's it's full blown you know alcoholics sharing. You know and <laughs> and, and I'll 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 go to that. But 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 if but if but if I found somebody who was new who was in real trouble with alcoholism, I would parade them off so fast to that little big book meeting that, that, that their head would spin, you, you, you know, be, because, because sharing is not a recovery program. Meeting attendance is not a recovery program. Those are incredibly important things. Uh, I I think my life has has benefited from my doing those things, but the vital spiritual experience happened with me from the result of actually taking the twelve steps. You know, uh, do you agree with that? Yes. So <clears throat> Bruce H., who was my sponsor uh, in, in, until he passed away, he was also a co-host on our show for years. <clears throat> he said something I've never forgotten. It. He said, you know, 
people that come to Alcoholics Anonymous that aren't alcoholics, they, they have every right to come, and we're glad they're there. And, and he says, you know, anybody can go through the 12-step process, maybe even cherry-pick some stuff out of it, and their life is probably going to improve. But he said once you actually follow the directions and you of the 12-step process and you have a spiritual awakening as a result of that process and you walk into a relationship with this power that does for you what you can't do for yourself— you don't just change your life or improve it. Your life is transformed. And that's the difference between just getting something good and positive and being a better person versus having a transformed life. I, you know, I believe that's absolutely true. There's, there's no, no doubt in my mind. No doubt in my mind. Yeah. Um, the, the, ch the change can't be surface. It has to be fundamental mm -hmm. it has to it, ha, it has to be it has to be a, a soul change the early uh, Oxford group people called this process soul surgery mm. uh, they had uh, they had the tenants of the Oxford group which were basically um, uh, uh, surrender confession uh, witnessing restitution prayer and meditation these were uh you know these were what developed into the 12 steps as bill built the architecture of alcoholics anonymous but they called that process soul surgery and and you know that's not really a, a bad name for what happens because it's not a surface it's not a surface change. You know, we've all tried surface changes. Surface changes are, are, are moving to a different state, trying a different liquor, trying to use drugs to control our alcohol. You know, you, you, you don't even going to a psychiatrist. There's a million ways to surface change. We need, we need that soul surgery. I, I'm, I'm hunting for something here uh, in the big book. Let's see, so this is in the spiritual experience at, at the end of the book. Many alcoholics have nevertheless include, uh, concluded that in order to recover, there's that word, recover, they must acquire an immediate and overwhelming God consciousness, followed at once by a vast change in feeling and outlook. So this God consciousness, which I refer to as a relationship, not a religion, but a, a relationship. It's relational. Um, th this is the thing that brings about that transformed life. And I, unfortunately, I know people who are not only meeting dependent, but they're even step dependent. And they have not come to a place where they're God dependent. And, and there, you know, it's like, I, I, I love the steps, but the, the steps, it's the hammer that builds the house, but it's not the house. And, and for the longest mm -hmm. time, for the longest time, I was like, I can't understand why I can't stay sober. I'm going to meetings every time the doors open. I'm in church on uh, a Wednesday night, Sunday morning, Sunday evening. I'm in contact with my pastor. I'm in contact with my sponsor regularly. We sit down and we read the book. I mean, we do this work. We're up on a mountaintop with a big lighter, turning our will and our life over to the care of God and immediately taking it back. Uh, <laughs> you know, we're doing all this stuff. And, and it was as clear, it was almost audible, Chris. Somebody asked me, what changed? I said, I'll tell you what it was. I had this moment of clarity where in my spirit, I heard a voice say to me, when you stop depending on your prayers and start depending on the one you're praying to, you'll stay sober. When you stop depending on the steps, and start depending on the one the steps are pointing you to, you'll stay sober. When you stop depending on your pastor, your sponsor, the meetings, no human power is no human power. 
And once you stop depending on, on that and start depending on the one they keep talking to you about, you'll stay sober. And it was like my whole life changed. And and I never picked up a drink after that. Because it, it was it was I stepped in to, from from depending on the methods to the method giver. Totally different thing. Completely. And I and I feel for people that haven't you know, made that transition yet. So oh, so do I. And you know, Monty, our experience is, is so has, has so many parallels. You know, uh, I have a I have above my bed a, a very long painting. It's a re- reproduction of a painting. And it's the Leonardo da Vinci Sistine Chapel painting where God and Adam are 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 touching uh-huh you know and uh, the lesson the lesson from that particular painting was uh was transmitted to me from i don't remember if it was joe hawk or mark Houston, but uh their their message always was stop worshiping the finger worship what it's pointing to mm. And they would they would reference the step work, and they would reference the big book, and they would reference the meetings, and they would ref- reference the sponsor. And they say all that stuff is the finger; it points you to the ultimate solution, which is uh, which is a relationship with the divine. That that that's it. That's that's the bottom line. You don't have to like it for it to be true. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to agree with it for it to be true. <laughs> right, right. I wish we had Wiley's article to to it's it, it's like reading a book report on a book you haven't read. Yeah. But uh but uh I, I you know it was, it was still it was some really great writing. You know, next week a date with destiny from October 1944. Yeah. Uh that's a very ominous sounding uh title. I'm it, looking it, forward it to is. that. It is. Well, this has been a, an excellent uh an excellent episode and as always we appreciate uh, you so much for giving up your your time, uh, you know, and, and the the service work that you do within the fellowship, uh, my friend. It it is so appreciated, and uh, we are we are. Uh, I've already talked to my wife about August. Hopefully, we'll be able to zip on up to Washington State, and that that all goes through. And um, and uh, maybe I'll have my my new cataract my my lenses my new lenses put in and i'll be able to see things much clearer uh so wow yeah, money yeah. that would be so that would be so special it's been a while since i've seen you i know yeah it has been i said i think the last time i saw you was either at it was it was either at a cape cod thing or was at the 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 opening or the founding of uh what was it serenity springs uh in in florida yeah yeah we did a thing and okay uh, sure with chris yeah with, with chris r yep 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 and uh Man, that was a long time ago that was a long a long time ago and and you know it was sad we we had to say farewell to the son of the founder of that program um who, who passed away here uh, just what a year or so two years ago or whatever Oh boy! Yeah, and too a many years back. Yeah, too too many too many people. We say goodbye to way too early, um, but uh, bless bless their hearts. Uh, yeah, bless their families. This thing, this stuff is serious stuff, folks. I mean, it really, really is. If you don't, if you haven't figured it out by now, the issue with trying to change the way we feel uh, in a manner that. Uh, keeps us emotionally dependent rather than emotionally sober it is vital stuff and we need to pay attention all righty well there we go uh listen our email address is take 12 radio at comcast.net and and by the way listeners if you are having any trouble um getting onto our website by using take 12 radio.com the number 12 simply use the whole word take 12 the word 12 uh, radio.com and, and you won't have any problem at all. I had a couple people bring bring that up. So we're trying to hunt that down. All right. You can download this uh, show and all of them for fun and for free. Make copies, distribute them. All we ask is that 
you don't charge for them. Because like what we're doing, we were doing it for fun and for free. Right, Chris? That's right, Monty. That's the only way. <laughs> All right. Until our next broadcast, this is the Monty Man along with Chris S. And we are wishing God's perfect serenity for you. For more recovery workshops with Chris S. and the Monty Man, visit our website at Take12Radio.com and click on the Recovery Workshops banner. This has been a broadcast of Take 12 Recovery Radio and KHLT Recovery Broadcasting. Kitty, 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 meow, meow, meow. Woof, woof.